Welcome back to part three of our video lecture for chapter number one, where we're going to be covering the different filing statuses. If you remember when we looked at the form 1040 form, here at the very top, we need to indicate the filing status of the taxpayer. Now, filing status is very important because it has an effect on the amount of taxes you have to pay. So here's an illustration that's linked in our Lao Lima uh, resource, resources folder for chapter number one, where we're going to be looking at a couple who has total income, combined income of 100000 for the year. And they're either going to be filing joint or separate or as single. So here in this first situation A, we have the two spouses. They're married now, and each has the same amount of income, 500000 so for a joint return, you're going to combine their income together, 100000 and combine their deductions together. Here we saw that uh, in the previous video, the standard deduction for a married filing joint couple is 24400 that we subtract out from their income to get the taxable income. And we're going to learn in Chapter 2 how to figure out the tax by using the tax table or tax rate schedule. In this case, it comes out to $8,686 for the year. Now, married couples don't have to file a joint return. They could each file their own separate return. So in this case, one spouse would take $50,000 and minus out a standard deduction for married filing separate, which is half of the joint, to get their own taxable income that you would look up on the tax table in Chapter 2 to get the tax for the year. Now, each spouse has to file their own separate return. So if you combine the two taxes on those two separate returns, the total tax for the couple is pretty much the same as if they had filed a joint return. Looks like it's just a $3 difference. Now, let's assume that the couple, all of the income is is earned by one spouse and the other spouse has zero. But again, in a joint return, you combine all the incomes together, including the zero, and you take their large standard deduction to get the same taxable income like we saw over here, resulting in the same tax. So it doesn't matter which spouse earns the income, you just combine them together. But there's a big difference now if this married couple will file separate returns so all of the income is allocated to one spouse, and the spouse only has half of the deduction for the joint. In other words, this standard deduction for the spouse that has no income is wasted. And if you look up this taxable income in the tax table, you can see how big this tax is. The cause of this big tax is not just because you lose this standard deduction here for the spouse that has no income, but all of this large income pushes up this spouse into a higher tax bracket. And we'll learn about tax brackets in our next chapter. So in this case here, by filing a set return as compared to a joint return, you're going to lose about six to $7,000 of federal income tax. So definitely you want to file a joint return probably in this situation. Let's take a look at a situation where we have unmarried couples. So in the case of a single, uh, two single people earning the same amount, if you look at their separate taxes and then combine it, it's going to be pretty much as if you were filing separate returns for a married couple. So really there's no motivation here for this single couples to get, get married if they're going to file separate or even a joint return. But again, if one of that uh, couple's person in the couple, unmarried couple, has all of the income or a large portion and the other has very little, you can see the tax of that um, person that has the income is going to be the same as we saw for married filing separate, resulting in a big tax for the total of the couple. Again, you're wasting this standard deduction of the person that has little income and you're pushing up this person with the income into a higher tax bracket again resulting in a, a tax of six or seven thousand dollars. So tell me what would you tell this couple here to do to save taxes? 
Well, you would tell them probably to get married and file a joint return and save six to seven thousand dollars a year in federal income tax, maybe even more so for their state income taxes. Of course, there's other reasons to get married, but marriage may help in certain situations to reduce a taxpayer's income tax. So to determine which one of these five statuses you're going to choose, probably the first thing you're going to ask the taxpayer is whether they were married. Let me get my pen here. If they were married at the end of the year, okay, at December 31st, it doesn't ma matter if they were unmarried for most of the year. It always is determined at the very end of the year whether they're married or not for tax purposes. And of course, you're going to answer yes for these two filing statuses we were talking about earlier. But if you answer no, they're not married at the end of the year, then you're going to be using one of these other three filing statuses. Now, there may be situations, certain situations, where the taxpayer is married, and we'll see later on that maybe they may qualify for a head of household filing status. But again, if you're generally married at the end of the year, you're going to be using one of these two filing statuses here. So let's talk about more about the married filing joint filing status. Again, you have to be married at the very end of the year. And if your spouse, one of the spouses, passes away during the year, the couple can still file a joint return or separate returns for that year a spouse passes away. Most times, as we've seen, it doesn't hurt filing a joint return. Or if the couple is married, they can choose to file separate returns. Here it says that tax planning tip. Like I showed you, most times filing a joint return doesn't hurt and it may save you money. But it's still common for married couples to file separate returns. And a, a couple of reasons why is maybe one spouse, is uh, the spouses are not in contact with each other. To file a joint return, both spouses have to agree to combine their incomes together to sign off the return, that one tax return together. If you cannot find that other spouse, the spouse you're working with has to file a married filing separate return. Maybe another reason why um, couples file separate returns is that they just can't get along. They don't want to help each other even to save taxes. They want to keep secret their financial information from one another. So they file separate returns. Or maybe one of the spouses has some back tax problems, has unpaid child support. If there's any overpayment of taxes, the government is going to keep that overpayment and not refund the money to help pay off the back taxes and child support. Now, it still may be advantageous to file a joint return in that situation. And the spouse that doesn't owe the back taxes and doesn't owe the child support can file something called injured spouse. And the IRS is going to allocate the amount of overpayment to refund to that injured spouse and keep the overpayment of the um, spouse that owes the back taxes uh, their share of the overpayment. But the government will determine, you provide information to the government, and the government will determine how much of the refund will go to the injured spouse. Or you just file a separate return to know up front how much of the refund is going to go to that spouse that doesn't owe the back taxes and child support. Okay, so let's say you're not married, but maybe you can qualify for the same standard deduction that a um, married filing joint couple can claim. Here, in this case, a uh, filing status called qualifying widow or widower is, is available for a surviving spouse. In other words, one of the spouses passed away 
And in the year that spouse pass away, the couple can still either file separate or joint. But the year after death and the year after that, in other words, two years after the spouse passes away, this uh, surviving taxpayer can claim that higher joint standard deduction if they don't remarry. In other words, they're unmarried. They're still a widow, widower. And they pay for over half of the cost of a household where they're um, claiming a dependent, a son or daughter dependent. Okay, And again, this applies to two years after the year of death of the spouse. And you get that higher standard deduction and the lower tax brackets of a possibly joint return. Okay, so let's say that the two years are over and you still have a dependent, could be even a non-son or daughter, but you're claiming a dependent and they live in the same household as the taxpayer and the taxpayer pays more than 50% of the household costs. Our taxpayer is now un, still unmarried and you can qualify for a lower standard deduction but still higher than the single filing status. This filing status is called head of household. Let me show you again here in this table the amount of the standard deduction. So in the case of a, a married filing joint, or the uh, qualifying widow, that's the maximum of 24800 of standard deduction. But the head of household that we're talking about now has a smaller standard deduction, but still larger than the, the single or the married filing separate um, standard deduction. So it's still good to have a head of household to get that larger uh, standard deduction. But again, you have to have a dependent living with the taxpayer. Here it says there's an exception for the dependent having to live with the taxpayer. That's where the dependent is the taxpayer's parent. The typical situation here is that the taxpayer is paying for the um, retirement home costs or care home costs where the parent is living. Otherwise, the dependent has to be living for uh, more than half of the year with the taxpayer for the taxpayer to be a head of household filing status. So if you don't qualify now for head of household, the last resort would be the single filing status. Let me jump back to this uh, slide here. There's uh, certain situations where the taxpayer is married. And of course, we said a married taxpayer has to either file join or separately. But an, uh, an exception to that is where the married taxpayer is considered to be a so-called abandoned spouse, where the two spouses don't live in the same home for the last six months of the year. And the uh, abandoned spouse has to have a dependent son or daughter living with them in the same household that they pay for more than half of the household costs. Again, this taxpayer is married, but living apart for the last six months, not half of the year during the year, but the last six months from July 1st to December 31st. And that abandoned spouse is claiming a dependent that's living with them for half of the year and paying for the half of the household costs. So that married um, abandoned taxpayer can use this head of household filing status. Now, if you don't qualify for any of those filing statuses we covered, then you have to use the single filing status. Again, you're unmarried at the end of the year. You're, you may be claiming a dependent, but you don't have a household that you're paying for for more than half the cost. Okay, so it's still possible for single taxpayers to be claiming dependents but uh, that doesn't automatically make them a head of household or qualifying widow or widower. Let's, um, let's take a look at a situation where we can see maybe all of the different filing statuses apply. 
So let's have two different taxpayers. Taxpayer, no, let's try this again. Tax, taxpayer number one. Sorry, my pen is not working here. Tax, taxpayer number one and taxpayer number two, a couple. And they're, um, they're unmarried, okay, unmarried. And let's talk about the current year 2020. So they're living together in the same household. Both have income. And they need to file their tax return for 2020. Okay, so what do you think their filing status is going to be on each of their returns? Well, unmarried, they're going to be single filing status for the year. So let's say that in the next year, they're still unmarried in 2021. But they have now a dependent child that was born and they support and they all live together. Tell me what's going to be their filing status for 2021? Well, they're still unmarried, so they cannot file married filing joint or married filing separate. But because of this dependent that they support and they live in that household that they um, pay for more than half of the costs. I'm making assumptions here. One of them can be head of household. Okay? And this head of household taxpayer is claiming the dependent. A dependent cannot be claimed by more than one taxpayer or more than one married couple. So the second taxpayer his or her filing status is single. Okay, so who is going to claim the dependent of the two? Probably the best person to claim the um, dependent is the is the taxpayer that has the larger income. Again, you're going to file different tax returns here. Two different tax returns: one head of household claiming the dependent and the other claiming single. Again, a dependent can be claimed only on one tax return as a dependent. Let's move on to the next year, 2022. And let's say the taxpayers tie the knot, so now they're married. Tell me, what's their filing status for the year? They either can file married filing joint just one tax return, combining all of their income and deductions and then one dependent, let's continue the dependent here, or they can file separate returns, yeah? Either married filing separate, or marrying filing separate, and again, only one of them, if, if a separate return, can claim the dependent. So let's, and, and we saw typically um, married filing joint is probably going to give you uh, the best or the least worst situation. Let's move on to the next year, 2023. And let's say tragically, one of the spouses passes away and our surviving spouse uh, continues here in the, set, in the next year, we still have this dependent here. Tell me, what's the filing status here in the year the spouse passes away? Okay, it's not the qualifying widow. The qualifying widow will be for next year, probably. Here in the year of death, it's either going to be married, filing joint again. You're combining all of the incomes up to the date of death of the deceased spouse with the surviving spouse. Or you could still file separate returns, but probably joint for this year of death. Yeah. Let's keep on moving. We don't have that first spouse, but still the second spouse with the dependent. 
So here's where that qualifying widow or widower with the dependent uh, son or daughter paying for more than half the household costs. And the same would be true for 2025 if the taxpayer doesn't remarry and still has the dependent and still paying for half of the household costs. It's in 2026 where you have that um, dependent unmarried taxpayer after the two years, after the date of the year of death, now this would be head of household. And we saw head of household way back here in um, this first situation, yeah, where we had this dependent living with the unmarried parents. And this head of household filing status will probably continue as long as you have this dependent uh, being a dependent of the taxpayer, where the taxpayers also paying for more than half of the household costs. So this is a situation you can see we're using all five different filing statuses. Yeah, single, head of household, married, filing, joint, possibly separate, and then the qualifying widow or widower. Okay, so this is the end of uh, part three of the video lecture for chapter four. Continue into part four, where we're going to learn about who qualifies as a dependent for our taxpayer.